Hello everyone, this is Joshua Gall, and today we're going to take a look at how we can uh, submit files for our classes on Fanshawe Online using the submission. Okay, now we can find submissions on Fanshawe Online by going to our EAP class, right? And we can do that by selecting a course and finding our EAP class. Okay, I'm in a demo site right now. And then we're going to go to evaluations and submissions. Okay, now I've set up a couple of different types of um, folders that you may see here um, to give you a few different examples of what we're looking at. So the first one, this is a, up here at the top, we can see which class we're doing. So we've got our core speaking and listening and applied. And these are going to be the folders that are for applied, just like these are for speaking and listening. Now you can notice here, we also have the completion status. This is one that I've already submitted files to. You can see that I've done 13 different times and a total of 17 files. And this means that some of the times that I submitted files, I would have put more than one file. So that's why the files number is bigger. The other ones here are not submitted, except for this one, which is empty. The reason why this is empty is because this submission folder hasn't opened yet. It's not going to open until this date, which is in the future. Okay, so a few things that we can do, if we have a um, submission folder that we've already submitted files to, we can click on it and this will allow us to see all of the old files we did submit and then I can click on it. I use this for training so I've submitted lots and lots of files but you would probably only have one or two. So I'm going to go back and there's a few others and they're all a little bit different. Now, the first one here, right, we've said it, you can't do anything with it because it hasn't opened yet, but a few of these have actually closed. So this one has already closed and this one has closed as well. So these are past the due, the due dates and this one here is still okay. It actually doesn't have a due date. And the way we can check that is by looking over in the due dates column and seeing if they have um, expired or not. Now, sometimes your professors will let you submit even after the deadline, like this one, and sometimes they will not. And if they close it, it's now locked. And if it looks like this and you can't click on it at all, it means that you've missed the deadline and it's closed. You can try to email your professor and ask them to open it for you or let you submit the file, but right now you can't do anything. The ones that are um, already um, past the deadline but still let you click on them, you can submit the file late and it will tell the professor how many days late you are. And so everything that I would do to submit it, adding files and submitting, um, I can still do it even though it is past the deadline. We'll look at this one because there is no deadline and I'm going to click on um, the name of it to get to this page. A few things to notice about this. The first is that it has some more information and if I click on this drop down menu it'll give me some more instructions or some more information. This one just says this is where the professor will give you instructions, but if I had some instructions, they would be here. Okay, when I want to submit a file, I can either add a file, I can record audio, or I could record video. Um, sometimes the record audio and record video buttons do not work for some students, sometimes they do, so you can try it or you can use a, another recording software um, and just upload the file directly, which may be a little bit safer. Um, so when I'm ready to submit my files, I'm going to click add a file. And it's gonna bring up a number of options. The first one is 
files that are on my computer or on, on a USB hard drive. I can find them using my computer. My locker will sh be any files that are saved in your locker. And you can go to resources locker to see your locker. Or you can also go to the Fanshawe Online main page to see your locker. There's group lockers and ePortfolios as well, but we're not going to worry about those. We're really just going to look at my computer because these, this uh, my locker is going to be pretty much the same. Just it's going to use files that are in your locker. So I'm going to click on it and we'll see this box. And this is the box that you'll always see when you're uploading files to Fanshawe Online. And there are two ways for me to do this. The first is for me to click upload and then I can find the file that I want to um, upload, right? And remember, we are going to be giving these to your professors. This is what they're going to be seeing and marking. So I can click on it and it will upload it for me. This was a little bit of a bigger file, so it's taking a little bit longer to do. Um, notice that there is a restriction of one gigabyte for file size. This is well below that, so we're okay. So there I have it. And if this is the correct file, then I could click add. And if it's the wrong file, I can click this X and it will remove it. However, I can also take the files if I know where they are. So for example, here, I have this file here that I can just take it and click it and hold down my mouse button and I'll start to drag it. And I don't want to let go of the mouse button. I want to keep holding it down until I take it over the box, which has now turned blue. And I'm just going to drop it in there and it will do the exact same thing. So if you know where the file is on your computer, it's probably faster to just click it, hold it in and drag it in. Um, but if you are more comfortable using the upload, it will do exactly the same thing. And of course, we can add more than one file um, to one submission. And then when we're ready, we can click Add. And it will show me these two files. And again, I have a, the option to um, remove them even now. Down here, we can see a comment. This is not necessary. Um, you don't have to do it. You only need to add a comment if you want to give your um, professor some information about this file. Uh, for example, if you submit a file to the submission folder and you realize it was the wrong file or you realize that you forgot to add a file, then you're going to have to do it again because you can't delete a submission. So you're going to have to add a new file. And when you do that, if they have the same name, but you changed one or two things, your professor won't know which one they should be marking. So in that case, writing a note down here that says, this is the file that I want you to mark, or I made a mistake, or please look at this file, um, that could be helpful for your professor. When you're ready, you can click the submit button and you're going to go to a review submission and it's just going to give you a bunch of information. And then done, we can look at our history or we can upload more files. Um, for now, we'll just say it's done. You'll see now that in your messages, you're going to have um, a, a confirmation email that will tell you you have submitted it and you'll know that it has been submitted correctly. We can now see that I have added these two and if I click on them, you can see exactly which ones they are. Okay, finally, I've created two more submission folders, but you'll notice that these have a slightly different symbol. This symbol is telling you that these submission folders are using Turnitin. Now Turnitin 
is a plagiarism checking software. And what Turnitin will do is read your essay and then, or read whatever document you put in, and it will sub search the entire internet as well as all of the other documents that have used Turnitin to see if you have copied anything from another place. So it's checking to make sure that you're not stealing other people's work. So you'll notice that one of these I have not submitted to yet and one of them I have. And Turnitin has a, um, it tells you how similar your essay is or your um, document is to another document. Now it's not gonna let me do it, but if I click here on the submission file, there's Turnitin similarity and this will usually be a graph or a bar with either if it's green, it means it's not very similar, maybe one or two sentences or maybe a word. Um, yellow will mean it's getting more and more similar and red means that it's almost directly copied from other places. Um, now, this will give you a score out of 100. So it will allow you to check to see how similar your work is to someone else's.